Turn with your Bible to Titus chapter 3. Titus chapter 3. <clears throat> Book of Titus, if you find first and second Timothy, you're almost there. <clears throat> Titus chapter 3. Amen. Titus chapter 3, we'll look together at verse 3. Titus chapter 3 and verse 3. For we ourselves were sometimes foolish, disobedient, deceived, serving diverse lusts and pleasures, living in malice and envy, hateful and hating one another. But after that kindness... And the love of our God, our God, our Savior, towards us appeared, not, um, not by works of righteousness, which we have done, but according to his mercy, he saved us by the washing of regeneration and the renewing of the Holy Ghost, which he shed on us abundantly through Jesus Christ, our Savior, that being justified by His grace, we should be made heirs according to the hope of eternal life. This is a faithful saying, and these things I will that thou affirm constantly that <clears throat> they which have believed in God might be careful to maintain good works. These things are good and profitable unto men. Let's go to the Lord in prayer together. Father, we thank you for your holy word. Father, your spirit will be our teacher this morning. Father, that you'd help me to get out of the way that you might share your message with your people. But Father, help us not hear, just hear your word. Lord, help us to be a doer of your word and not just a hear only. Father, we just thank you for loving us. We pray you'll be with us in this service, Father, that if there's a person here that doesn't know you as their Lord and Savior, Father, they would turn to you this morning before it's eternally too late. Father, we just love you. We thank you. In Christ's name we ask you. Amen. <clears throat> the question is, what were we like before we got saved? Not according to our own standards, but according to God's. And if we look at what God says about us before we got saved, and what the Apostle Paul has used by the Holy Spirit of God to say, verse 3 says, For we ourselves were also sometimes foolish. Anybody here like that? Notice, disobedient, mm. deceived, serving diverse lusts and pleasures, living in malice and envy, hateful and hating one another. You know, before I got saved, and ever really, I, I saw myself in a way that was, wasn't truly accurate, I saw myself as a good guy, as a good person. How many of y'all thought you were good? How many of you said, you know, I'm good. I'm, I'm, I'm okay. I'm as good as the next guy. Right? Isn't that, what we, isn't that the way we grade? Oh, yeah. Don't lie. Because we think we're good. That's not as helpful as it might be on the side, please. Thank you. <clears throat> It's sad, but we're going to work with him. Um, but we need to be real careful of one thing, real clear, real straight off the top, is that we need to remember how we used to see ourselves. And I assure you, there's nobody on the planet that you've bathed, washed, and clothed more than yourself. Amen? Some of you moms have done it a couple times. Problem with self-love in our group. We've learned real quickly we took good care of ourselves and we love ourselves. And that's good. I'm glad you do. Amen. I'm glad you took a bath this morning. <laughs> Praise the Lord for it. But uh, in reality, we want to be real clear about something. And it, it's, it's abundantly clear that we think of ourselves as good. We think of ourselves as clean. We think of ourselves as pleasing to God. And in the truth... In our flesh, no good thing dwells. 
In truth, we are wicked and selfish and worldly. Amen? Y'all know that's true? If you don't know that's true, it's because you're still in the first camp. Amen? Let me tell you, this morning you're in one or two camps. Either you're in the good person camp and on your way to hell, or you're a sinner saved by grace and on your way to heaven. Amen? Only two camps to be in. And we need to make sure that we're in one camp or the other. And I assure you, you are in one camp or the other. And I can't tell you which camp you're in, but you know right here. Amen? And so as we look at this passage, I want to kind of remember, I want us to, by way of memory, remember what we used to be. Because if we remember what we used to be, we'll be real diligent this week to bring lost people to hear the good news of Jesus Christ here at Camp Meeting. If we remember what it was like to be lost, we'll remember how wonderful it is to be found. If we can remember what it's like to be lost, we can remember how wonderful it is to be found. God's people said amen. amen. Because if you're not found, you don't know what I'm talking about. There are many religious people that will ride a pew and get their name, get dunked in the water and get the name Baptist and still be completely not born again. Completely lost and on their way to hell. And they got a name on the roll. Amen? I'll be honest with you. It's easy to get your name on the roll. It's hard to get your name written in the Blanche Book of Life. And that's what matters. Amen? Friends, let me tell you something. You better make sure that you know that you know that you know. That deep in the core of you, there's a Holy Spirit of God that dwells. Your body is now the temple of the Holy Spirit. And you know the Savior. Amen? I can't answer that for you. But you know. You know if you've been changed. You know if you used to be these things. Notice, let's look, let's look at them in detail real quickly. Number one, first it says, Paul lists some of the things that he listed. First of all, he says we were foolish. Foolish meaning spiritually blind. I only cared about me. I only cared about what suited me. What I liked, what I disliked. And it's all about what I like. And if God, the preacher says something I don't like, then I'm out. Hey, Amen. you ever met people like that? Because it's all about consumer Christians. They, they get what they deserve. Friends, listen to me. I am not a salesman. And the customer is not always right with me. Let me say that again. The customer is not always right with me or with God. God's always right, and people are always wrong. The human heart is deceitfully wicked above all things. Who can know it, friends? Let me tell you something. It's because your emotions or feelings tell you something. You need to make sure that what you believe, what you're thinking, lines up with God's holy word. Then you're right spiritually. If you think your emotions are what leading you, or what's leading you, I'm understand something, friend. You'll never be right with God being led by your emotions. Do you hear me, church? You need to be led by the propositional truth of the word of God and you'll be secure. Amen? We always say in a Baptist culture, we say, once truly saved, always saved. Notice the, the, the rest of the term, once truly born again, always. But the question is, are you born again? And there's a question, that's always a question there, and it always looms, are you real? And nobody can answer that for you but you. Are you real? Disobedient. Living in a daily rejection of Christ. You know people like that? You know, I've met people that call themselves Christians and still reject Christ. They're the people that like to choose the Bible like it's a buffet. And we're going to have us a potluck here in a little bit. Amen? And uh, let me tell you something. There's nothing spiritual about a potluck. Okay, because guess what? We get to pick and choose what we like. Y'all need to realize that y'all got to eat like I do. Whatever people brought, i got to put it on my plate. Amen? Whatever people get, because guess what? If I, get, if I skip somebody's dish by accident, now if you put sour cream in your junk, I'm not touching it. I'm not going to touch it. But we believe sometimes that spiritually, it's like a potluck dinner. God's Word's right there for us, and we pick and choose what we want on our plate. No, no, friends. You get the whole main course and every bit of it, or you get none of it. You don't get to pick and choose. This ain't a buffet. 
We'll have one of those later. Amen, church? You need to submit to the authority of the Word of God. God's people say amen to that. Amen. Submit to the authority of the Word of God. If you do not, guess what? You're lost. Can you have, the, can you have Jesus without the Word of God? Nope. Amen? Jesus is the Logos. He is the Word. John chapter 1. If you don't have Him... You got nothing. Are y'all riding with me, church? What? You mean, Brother Joe, I got to believe the Bible? Yes. Duh. I mean, if you'd have asked that 50, uh, 25 years ago, said, church, do y'all got to believe the Bible? That would have said, absolutely. It's crazy talk to consider myself a Christian and not believe the whole word. Amen. When I was growing up, people asked me, did Jonah go into the belly of the fish? Yep, 100%. Did, he, did, 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 did Noah, did he put all those animals in that boat? Yes, absolutely, 100%. Did God create everything in six literal days? Yes, sir, absolutely, 24-hour periods of time. The word barar in Hebrew meaning 24-hour period of day. That's how God did it. And anything else is nonsense and human wisdom, and it's not from God. Y'all got me, church? I know some of y'all liberals are starting to get a little shaky in your knees. That's okay. Hopefully y'all get born again. We love when y'all get born again and really sold out to the Savior. You know that's the whole point? It's to completely fall before the Savior and say, You are my God. And you're in control and I'm not. Amen? How many of y'all already come to that conclusion? If you have, say amen. amen. If you haven't, you will. Let me say that again to you. If you haven't, you will. And it might be too late. Amen? Might be your last breath, and then all of a sudden you're immediately find yourself in torment. You know what? Rich man Lazarus, the rich man, he was sure that everything God said was true when he got there. Amen? And there is a cry from hell today, and the cry is, believe the Bible while there's time. The message he had when he found out there was no help for him was send somebody back. Send somebody back to tell my family. So they don't come to this place. Y'all got that church? That's the cry in hell today. Please tell my family. Please tell my friends. Please tell everybody that you can see and know that they need to turn away from the world, the flesh and the devil, and turn to the Savior. Thank you for that water, by the way. <coughs> I don't know who told you to do it, but they were smart. Foolish, deceived, Notice, deceived, a person, a, a believing um, one of the enemy's lies. When we're deceived, it says Eve, when um, she stood before God and gave a report, she said, the, the serpent beguiled me, deceived me. Amen? Friends, listen to me. If you believe in anything else but Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, I assure you, you're deceived. If you believe in anything else but him, you're deceived. Amen. Friends, don't listen to man's wisdom. Don't listen to some guru on TV. Don't listen to what everyone else has to say. Don't listen to society or what science books tell you or philosophy tells you. Listen to the holy word of God. And you'll be safe. Amen? You say, Brother Joe, you're telling us we got to believe the Bible? Yes. Duh. You mean I've got to reject what science books say? Yes. If they conflict with the Word of God, they're false. If they can, if, what you have in your life that conflicts with God's Word needs to be gone. It needs to be gone. How many of y'all know that's true? How many of y'all think that it's okay to play footsies with the devil? Amen? Not okay. 
See, last time I checked, he's a roaring lion seeking whom he may devour. That's last time I checked. Y'all checked the same thing, amen? We got to be careful that we don't let the world, the flesh, and the devil run us. Because they will if we allow us. Notice, not just deceived, but that's what we used to be. Notice, foolish, deceived. Notice, serving diverse lusts and pleasures. Boy, y'all wish that wasn't there, don't you? Because America, we become a people of lust and pleasure. We are the definition in the culture, in the entire world, of those that love pleasure and lust. Say, I don't believe that, Brother Joe. I said, have you been to Walmart? Have you clipped on the stupid tube at home? Have you gone on the internet? Do you have your eyes open? Amen? Have you read Cosmopolitan Magazine? Amen? You don't have to read it. All you got to do is walk by it. It tells you everything you don't want to know. Let me tell you something. We live in a culture and society, I mean, what do they say? Inquiring minds want to know, right? Friends, we've got to be careful that we don't find ourselves trapped in, the, in, in a life built on pleasure. Say, what do you mean by that, Brother Joe? Well, it's real easy. Some people, we know, they live what we call live for the weekend. They work all week so that Friday comes and they can live for the weekend. Does anyone here know what I'm talking about? I heard that was real weak, amen. Let me tell you something, people live for the weekend. They'll work hard all week. I remember we had some roofers roofing, this, roofing the church. I'll give you an example of this. Some roofers roofing the church, and they were doing an excellent job. Excellent job. I used to be in the roofing business, so I knew something about it. I said, these guys are doing a great job. Well, every shingle's lined up. Everything's nailed down properly. They're gonna, it's going to seat properly as the sun hits it. It's going to seat just right. They're doing a great job. Well, one, one morning, it was Monday morning, I'm coming, walking over to the office, and all of a sudden I see one guy there that I, I know is the boss and two other guys. And I said, where's everybody else? And the boss looked back to me and says, hung over. Hung over? Yeah, they're drunk. They had too good of a time on the weekend. He said, generally they don't come around until Tuesday, so they only work a couple days a week. Amen? You know, I used to work on a framing crew. The same thing was true. We used to work with a guy. His name was J.R. J.R. was an exceptionally good vinyl siding man, excellent framer, exceptionally good roofer. He could work fast. He could nail on so many shingles in, a, in an hour. The guy was an exceptionally good worker. And he was a little guy, so he could move fast. Oh, but old J.R., the only problem with old J.R. is we'd, we'd have a job we'd have to do. And we'd have three days to do it. Guess what happened on Monday? Well, J.R. was drunk, and he couldn't even function. And he'd call him to the boss and say, hey, boss. I'm like, I'm not the boss, first of all. Why are you calling me? Oh, wrong number. He, 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 was, he was drunk every Monday. So as a whole, the whole outfit couldn't work because he did certain things no one else did. Amen? Let me tell you something, friends. We live in a culture that's all about pleasure. It's all about getting my needs met. It's all about me. And that's the opposite of everything the Lord Jesus taught us. Opposite of everything that God did. I'm so glad that God wasn't a selfish punk like we are. Y'all hear me put y'all in the category with me? Like we are. Because Jesus, if he was like us, he wouldn't have gone to the cross. He'd have said, you know what? This cross doesn't sound too good. I don't think it'll be a nice place to go. And I like to take care of me. I'm the most important person in my life. It's all about me. Amen? Because that's what's true. And the danger is today, friends, is we haven't changed that. That's still, that's still the idea today, is many people love pleasure more than they are lovers of God. They love pleasures and lusts. Notice, living for the weekend, glorifying the flesh. Notice, malice. Malice is having evil intent, envy, feeling, the feeling of discontent and ill will towards someone else who is advantaged. Hateful, 
and hating one another. Before we came to Christ, we looked at the world one way. But since we've come to the cross, we should see the world completely differently. Amen? You know, when you're in Christ, it's not about what it's about, me, me, me. It's about you, 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 Lord. You know, our hymns don't go like this. Don't go, God, thank you, I thank you that I'm so awesome. I don't know a hymn that goes that way, amen? I, I know the ones that sing about how awesome God is and how wonderful the Savior is and what He's done for us because that constitutes praise. If all I'm saying is about me, then guess what? God isn't in that. Amen? Friends, listen to me. Listen carefully. We have got to be servants, not masters. We have to serve the Lord. He is our master. We are His servants. Amen? And if we would be servants, guess what? We would serve Him. We would, we would bring glory to Him. We would be the kind of men and women that honor Him with our life. If we don't, then we, uh, you know what, we're, just, we're like the old flesh. There are many people that I know that said they're saved and they walk, in the, walk with the devil. They walk in the flesh. They don't have anything to do with God. And that's a sad state of affairs for them. Verse 4 says, But after that the kindness and the love of God our Savior toward men appeared, what appeared? Kindness and love of God our Savior appeared. We can also look at Romans chapter 5 verse 8 says this, But God committed his love towards us while we were yet sinners. Christ died for us. Notice a testimony is a person that recognizes that which he was and that which what he is now. Do you have a testimony? Do you remember what you used to be so that you can praise God for who you are now? See, that's what a testimony is. A testimony is, God, I used to be that, but you changed my life through Jesus Christ, and now I'm this. Now I'm a servant. Now others are before myself. I prefer you, Lord, and your truth over my own desires. I can't answer that for you if that's your situation, but I hope that you are transformed. I hope that you are changed. I hope that you are that new creature where old things have passed away and behold, all things have become new. But I'll tell you, I don't know for you. I know for me. And you better know for you, amen? When we think about our sin, there is a laundry list of them, and we don't need to go into detail concerning them, but we used to be haters of God and haters of each other. When we have Christ in our life, we no longer become haters of each other. We become lovers of each other. Amen? Amen. And we're looking out for the other person's best interests, not our own. I've met too many people that said they love the Lord, and they say, me and mine. I'm just going to look out for me and mine. Nobody else. Amen? Amen? You know what's funny is every time, I, there was a program I used to like to watch. It was called Doomsday Preppers. Does anyone know what I'm talking about? These are people that are terrified that something's going to come down. Okay? They live in, a, in terror. They, can't, they get a year's worth of canned food and water supplies. And, and praise Lord, I wish they had that same energy towards the gospel. Amen? But they, they, they want to say, oh, it's going to come, it's coming. We've got to be ready for the financial collapse or the Russian attack or whatever. And I said, if you have the same energy towards, I've got to tell people about Jesus. I've got, to get, I've got to get ready for the rapture because it could happen at any moment. I need to be walking with God today. Wouldn't we be different? Amen. amen? I wish we had some heaven preppers, amen? I'm just getting ready for heaven, Lord. I want to tell as many people as I can about you. I want to walk with you. I want to spend time with you. I want to be in your house. I want to be in your word. I want to be in prayer. You know what? That's what revival is really all about. When me and you have a desire for holiness, when me and you have a desire for godliness, when me and you have a desire to please God and not ourselves, that is what revival is. 
Have you been praying for that? Because we're having a camp meeting this week. And the reason I keep focused on camp meeting is because we're going to meet all week. We're going to meet. That's the only sure thing that's going to happen. Revival's going to happen when me and you turn away from the flesh and turn to the Savior. When we get rid of all the junk in our life and say, you know what, God, I want you to have first priority in every part of my life. Guess what? Then revival's taking place. How many of y'all think you need to do that this week? They're just thinking one of you that doesn't need it. Every one of you needs to be revived and be back to a right relationship with God. You say, well, Brother Joe, I'm right with God. Really? Amen. Let me tell you something. We better be careful with thinking of ourselves more highly than we ought to think. Amen. For pride goeth before a fall, a hearted spirit before destruction. Isn't that right? The person here that doesn't think they need revival is the person here that needs it the most. Do you hear me, church? The person that doesn't think they need it is the one that's in the most desperate possible need of revival. After his kindness and love, God's kindness and love has transformed and tra changed me and you. But he died for us when we were yet sinners. He died for us when we didn't love him, when we were enemies. That's how good God is. Notice the rest of the verse. Look at verse 5. It says, Not by works of righteousness, which we have done, but according to his mercy, he saved us. Friends, you never earned it. You never were good enough. You didn't do anything to get it. Notice, he saved us by the washing of regeneration and the renewing of the Holy Ghost that he shed on us abundantly through Christ our Savior. We are not saved by works of righteousness, which we have done. Works save no one. Salvation comes through faith in Christ and faith in Christ only. Salvation comes not by... Um, it comes by, God, by God's kindness and love only, but also through His mercy. So His kindness, His love, and His mercy have been shed abroad for each one of us. Now, I wonder, sometimes people say, well, why do you want to go to church? Why do you want to give in your church? Why do you want to do all that religious stuff? Why do you want to sing praise? Why do you want to do all these things? Because it's confusing to lost people. Because we've received kindness Love, mercy, and grace from our Savior. We've received so much. And He's received very little from us, if we're honest. Amen? Let me tell you something. He is, he, he bank, look, God the Father bankrupted heaven so that you could be redeemed. So that you could be redeemed. The Savior died for you. And let me tell you something. If we spent the whole rest of our life, it wouldn't be a wasted life for the Savior. When a sinner trusts Christ, he is cleansed by the washing of regeneration from all of his sins, and he's renewed and made a new person by the indwelling Holy Ghost. Friends, listen to me. The day you got saved, the day you trusted Christ, your body became the temple of the Holy Spirit. Amen? Amen. At that moment, you were indwelled by the Holy Ghost. And from that moment on, guess what? There's been a battle raging inside of you. A battle between the flesh and the Spirit. The Spirit's been telling you what? Follow God. Spend time in the Word. Spend time in prayer. Get right with God. Stay right with God. And then your flesh is saying, no, 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 no. Don't do any of that. Live for you. It's all about you. Live your life for you. You know one example that I saw over and over again in my life, and specifically in my particular life, is my grandmother, who had every opportunity to go live for herself. They had retirement golden years in mind, and they had earned them. But instead of doing that, she said, I have three grandkids that are, have parents that are just worthless. And he said, you know what? We need to reach out to our grandkids before they perish. 
And guess what they, she did? She put her whole life on hold. All of the things that she wanted to do so she could raise that next generation. See, it's because she loved. Because she was loved. She shared the love of Christ with me. My grandfather said the same thing. He said, if it wasn't for your grandma, y'all wouldn't be here. He said, I love you and everything, but I want to kick your rear end most of the time. I love my granddad, but let me tell you something. It's my grandma is the reason I was in their home. And because of her love and compassion and mercy, I'm the man I am today. And she won't be forgotten. Not by me, not by my kids, and not by my kids' kids. Why? Because she was of the loving example that she set forth in my life, and I'm pouring into their life, and she will not be forgotten. So let me tell you something. Giving your life away for Christ's sake is a great endeavor indeed. And what you do for God will not go unnoticed. And God will reward you richly beyond your wildest imagination. But it's not going to be financial. We were a financial burden for my grandparents. It's not going to be some kind of health, wealth, nonsense. It's going to be something that's so more, much more powerful than that. Is the love of three little boys that had nobody else. And when they all graduated college, you know who they thanked? They thanked Grandma. Why? Because she loved us and she showed Jesus to us. My granddad, great man of God, loved the Lord, loved, the, loved us. But it's grandma that transformed my life. Amen? And it was because she loved Jesus. She couldn't have done that on her own. They had all kinds of fun stuff to plan. They had saved up. They had plenty of retirement. When they had to raise three more kids, it transformed the whole thing. Was it worthwhile? I assure you it was. And I remember that right before my grandmother passed and went home, went home to heaven, she didn't die. She went home to heaven, friends. Let me tell you, that's how it goes for believers. Our folks don't die, they just go on to heaven. She said, Joey, it was worth it. It was worth it. Friends, do we realize when we give our life away for Christ's sake, we gain everything? When we are selfish and petty and backwards, we miss everything. Don't let that be us. Let's love God. And let's follow His Word. <clears throat> Verse 7 says, Being justified by His grace, grace is unmerited favor, you didn't earn it, we should be made heirs according to the hope of eternal life. This is a faithful saying, and these things I will that thou, um, that thou affirm constantly. Why do you think we need to do that constantly? Me and you need a reminder, friends, because we forget. And it's real easy to forget. It's real easy to forget about God and forget about what He's done and say, oh, well, that happened years ago. No, no, friends. If you're born again, you love it, the old, old story, more and more, and it becomes sweeter every year you're saved. Notice constantly that they which have believed in God may be careful to maintain good works. These things are good and profitable unto men. What is the result of the kindness, love, and mercy, and grace that we have received through Jesus Christ? The answer is hope. We call it the blessed hope. Eternal life. Heaven. Is it a, is it a hope? Is it a maybe so hope or is it a 100% guaranteed? 100% guaranteed. It cannot be voided. It's written in blood. And I assure you, it will be as good for eternity. Aren't you glad? When my name was written in the last book of life, it was not written with invisible ink. Amen? When your name was written, it wasn't written with invisible ink. It'll last forever. But notice... Love, mercy, and grace, we have hope. What hope? Blessed hope, eternal life, heirs of the kingdom. Other results of good, uh, uh, is good works. We will have good works. Friends, we talk about good works all the time. And this is something that we often get confused by while reading the book of James. 
We get confused like, what are good works? Well, good works are me and you doing things that please God. Amen? That's me and you doing things that please God. And our motivation for doing them is just as important as doing them. We should do everything we do as Christians because we love God, not because of some religious duty or obligation. Do you love God? If you love Him, you will serve Him. If you love Him, you'll be a part of His church. If you love Him, you'll give faithfully and the preacher will never say a word to you about it. Amen? If you love Him. But if you're selfish, if you're carnal, Amen? You know, it's a funny thing. People ask me, say, well, Brother Joe, what about this? What about that? I say, friends, if you love God, I don't have to ask you to do it. If you love God, you know what? I won't have, if you love God, I won't have to ask you this week to be at camp meeting because you'll be here because you love God. Amen? If you love God, you're going to want to hear God's word. You're going to want to sing praise to his holy name. You're going to want to participate in everything that's going on because you love God. And you love him because he first loved you. He first already, he already loved you first. Do y'all know that? Say amen, church. Amen. He loved you first. Good works. We should, be, we should be zealous for them, Scripture says. You know, the only concrete evidence the unsaved world has that you belong to God is your good works. The only concrete evidence that you're born again to the lost world is your good works or your fruit bearing if you will that's the only evidence do y'all believe that's true friends listen to me you say well people don't think I'm saved when I'm at work well what kind of fruit are you bearing people don't call me a real Christian they think I'm just playing games you know what are you bearing fruit because not because fruit makes you saved, because if you're saved, you bear fruit. Amen? Because Jesus is the vine, and we are the branches. And if we abide in him, we produce much fruit, Scripture says. Amen? Are you in the vine, which is Jesus Christ? I can't answer that for you. I wish I could. Examples of good works is helping our neighbor, is sharing Christ with someone, bringing them to our camp meeting so they hear the gospel, giving in our local church time, finances, sacrificially, showing compassion on others who don't really deserve it. Amen? How many of y'all think you got your compassion window? You're like, well, I'll help those who deserve it. I'll help people and I'll be friendly and compassionate to those that have earned it. Hmm. Now Jesus didn't ask me if I earned it before he gave me salvation, so I wonder if I can do it that way. I guess not. Amen? Let me tell you something. We've got to show mercy and compassion and grace to who? To all. For John 3, 16, for God so loved the world, that's everybody, right? That he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever, anybody, whosoever, anybody, whosoever, anybody that believes in him should not perish and go to hell, but should have eternal life. How many of y'all memorized that as a kid? You know why we wanted everybody to memorize that? Because it's important. Because we need to realize that grace is available, that mercy is available because of what Jesus did. We need to be bearing that grace and mercy to the lost and dying in Kingsville and in Corpus and in Laredo and every other place we go. We need to be bearers of the grace and mercy of God. If we don't, then who's going to be? Oh, Brother Joe, that's your job. Friends, listen to me. My job is to equip the saints to do the work of the ministry. Y'all hear that again? Ooh, you didn't like that, did you? Equip the saints, all born-again Bible believers, to do the work of the ministry. Not for me to do the work of the ministry, 
but for me to equip you so that you can do it. Amen, church? We just, I just, we got, just got done equipping some folks to share the gospel. Are you equipped? If you're not, let me tell you something. We'll bend over backwards and do whatever it takes to get you equipped. Don't be unequipped. Amen? You say, well, brother, you don't know what to do. Well, you need to come to me and we'll find out what to do. Don't sit there and go, well, I wish I knew more about the Bible. I wish I studied it. I wish I, no, 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 friends. Show up and we'll teach you the Bible. Show up and we'll get you educated and, 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 and informed and instructed so that you can be a bold witness for your faith. But you know what? You don't need all that to be a bold witness. All you need is what God's already done in you. I'll help you, but you know what? You don't, probably don't need my help. We need to be bold witnesses for Christ today because we're not promised tomorrow. The rapture happens this afternoon and we never have a camp meeting. Guess what? I want to make sure that I was busy about my father's business while I had time to be busy. Amen. Amen. You better be busy. I'm excited to hear what Wes is going to play for us and, and, and all the praise and worship is going to happen this week. But guess what? We might not get to that. He might take us out of here and if you're left behind, I'm sorry for you. Amen. Because your opportunity to be saved is just in a moment. And the only person that you're going to be guilty for not getting saved is you. There's no one else to blame. The gospel is going to be as available to you. You can trust Jesus even right now. You better not leave this place before you know that you know that you know. And you're absolutely sure that you're born again. Three things real quickly as we close up this morning. Number one. Christians remember to show compassion to the lost because somebody showed you compassion. You hear me, church? Remember to show compassion to the lost because one day someone showed compassion to you. I have my grandma and grandpa compassion to me, especially my grandma. Someone shared Jesus with you. They gave you great compassion, love, grace, and you ought to be thankful to the Lord for that. Secondly, because of God's kindness, love, and mercy, and grace, we have the blessed hope, eternal life. Aren't you glad you have eternal life in heaven? John 10, 10, I have come that you might have life and have it more abundantly now. That's a little taste when the Holy Spirit comes in, amen? A little taste of what you're going to get. Then John 14, 3, if I go and prepare a place for you, I'll come again and receive it to myself to where I am, there you may be also. Amen? That's talking about New Jerusalem. That's talking about heaven, friends. Aren't you glad that if you know Jesus Christ and if you breathed your last just in a moment, heaven would be where you'd be? Heaven would be where you'd be? It's not good English, but it sounds okay. Friends, listen to me. If you're not sure, make sure. If you're not right, get right. Because today is the day. This is the moment. This is the time. Finally, the last thing I'd like to share with you is this. Christians, we need to be careful to maintain good works in our life. Why? Because that's the only guide that people have to Jesus. Amen? Many times it'll be mounting your good works that do what? That show people the Savior. I remember when we went to Rancis Pass and a bunch of y'all donated your time and energy and I remember what the guy said. He said, I'm so thankful that God used you guys. Amen? Some of the guys were with me. They said, yep, that's exactly what he said. He said, I'm so thankful that God used you. Friends, listen to me. God is, is ready to use you. And he's going to use you in a way that you can't possibly understand or even know about. But you have to be a servant ready to be used. You have to be an empty vessel that he can fill with his spirit. If you're full up with the world, the flesh, and the devil, friends, there's no room for anything else. Amen? How much more can you add to a full cup? Nothing. Friends, do you need to get right with God today? Do you need to check your own heart with God? If you do, I pray you will. Let's go to the Lord in prayer together. Father, we thank you for this time together. We thank you for this opportunity to study your word. Father, I think of many today, Father, who, 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 love, who love pleasures and love, love just, they want to live, up, live this life and live it up to its fullest. Father, that's not a full life. That's not a wonderful life. A wonderful life is centered on the relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ. 
And Father, there's someone here today that doesn't know you as their Lord and Savior. Father, I pray they would even say right now with me, Lord Jesus, I recognize I'm a sinner. I recognize by looking at your commandments that I, I've never been, I've lied, I've, de I've deceived, I've done, done wicked things, and I know I'm not clean before you because you expect perfection and I, I'm not. And Father, I pray that if somebody here realizes their need for Jesus, that they say, Lord Jesus, I recognize I'm a sinner. I recognize I can't save myself. I'll never be good enough. There'll never be any good works to get me there. I trust what Jesus Christ did on the cross for my sin. I trust you, Lord, and I trust you only. I believe you. I, w I want you in my life. Forgive me, Savior. I trust you. I believe you. And Father, if someone said that this morning just directly to you, I pray you'll give them the strength and the boldness to come forward and make a public profession. Father, if there's someone else this morning that says, you know what, I'm a Christian, but I know I need revival. I know I need to get right with God. I know i got some junk that I've been holding on to, some stinking thinking and other things that don't please you, God. Father, I pray that you'll speak to that heart even right now, that they would repent. They say, Lord Jesus, forgive me. 1 John 1, 9 says, if we confess our sin, you are faithful and just to forgive us our sin and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. And Father, I pray they will lay out whatever that is before you and turn away from it and walk with you. Father, there might be someone else who says, you know what, I feel like Retama Park Baptist Church is where you're leading me to serve, Lord. I, I want to I surrender to being a, a, a member of Retama Park Baptist Church. Father, if that's what's on somebody's heart this morning, I pray they'll do that. Father, I just pray you'll move in our midst this morning, that your spirit will have free reign among us, and that we would just respond to you in faith. Father, we love you. We thank you. In Christ's name we ask you. Amen.